statement on the Monday protest march. Yesterday, we had a date with destiny that was immensely successful. We wish to take this early opportunity to thank our supporters and patriotic Kenyans who turned out in large numbers to salvage our country. Our country and our democracy are much stronger because of the unwavering resolve of these patriotic citizens of our country. We also wish to express our gratitude to the media who shone a light on the de demonstrations the whole day and the Kenyans were able to see that it is the police who are violent and inciting the violence. They also informed the international community about what was happening here in Kenya. Therefore, we thank you. Very unfortunately, during this otherwise peaceful process, many of the demonstrators got hurt and at least two innocent Kenyans were killed in cold blood by the police. We pass our sincere condolences to the families that lost loved ones in the, to the police brutality. We will stand with those families in all ways, including pursuing justice on behalf of their loved ones. We will ensure that all those responsible are held to account for the lives that were cut short and the pains of those who got injured. There was an attempt on the lives of both Honorable Rael Odinga and Honorable Kalonzo Musioka. Their cars were, were shot at, but luckily they were unharmed. We, however, remain horrified and disgusted by the response by the police. At a time the country is going through major security challenges in huge swaths of the country where bandits and other criminals appear to have taken charge, we were shocked that police could assemble so many personnel and so much equipment to confront peaceful protesters. That brutality witnessed yesterday does not belong to this country. It is the more, more disgusting because the citizens were acting within the provisions of the Constitution, were given notice of the intention to march on Nairobi. It is impunity at its worst. We were, de we were determined to confront it as they saw yesterday. We demand the immediate and unconditional release of all our people who were arrested yesterday. We appeal to our supporters to show up and stand in solidarity with our compatriots who are being held wherever they are, including the courts. In this struggle, there is no big or small fighter. The police are clearly the last straw of brutal Ruto. Ruto's greatest aspiration is to return Kenya to the old dictatorship, where is the unquestioned tyrant controlling everyone's life. While we condemn Ruto's brutality and the ruthlessness, we have come to the conclusion that our police shall never change unless we make them change. We therefore wish to make Kenyans know that we have put together a team of security and legal experts to examine the conduct and orders given by the police commanders to the officers on the streets that led to the brutality meted out yesterday. 
we shall institute legal action against individual officers who give such orders that led to the mayhem. In this regard, we decry the silence of the International Police Oversight Authority, sorry, Independent Police Oversight Authority, IPOA, and the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights on brutal Ruto's misuse of the police. We are going for individual responsibility and culpability against officers who acted against the Constitution. So far, we have a case to file individual charges against Mr. Adamson Bungay, the Nairobi police chief. We'll press these charges locally and internationally. We'll make Mr. Bungay and his enablers understand that the days when regimes could brutalize and butcher citizens with impunity are long gone. However, we commend those among the police who showed restraint in their actions and showed respect for the rights of their fellow Kenyans. We reiterate to our supporters and all patriotic Kenyans that this struggle is just starting. We are not looking back, and we will not be intimidated. No retreat, no surrender. Our issues remain as follows, fellow Kenyans. Number one, cost of living. We will not relent until this regime understands that the people are hurting and that their suffering must be at the center of our priorities as a nation. We will push on until the cost of food, fuel, electricity come down. Two, electoral justice. We will continue fighting the attempt to constitute a compliant electoral commission. Brutal Ruto must stop reconstituting the IBC unilaterally and packing it with his puppets without the involvement of other stakeholders. At the same time, we demand that the four commissioners who were forced to resign because they differed with Mr. Chebukati on the results must be reinstated. We maintain that IEBC must open the servers and allow an independent international audit that will without doubt prove to Kenyans that Bruto Ruto did not win the last elections. Three, inclusive government. Bruto Ruto must stop the ethnicization and commercialization of the public service. We'll fight for as long as it takes to save this country from being ruled by cartels, elites, and ethnic warlords. We are determined to lead the fight for the inclusive government opportunities based on merit. Four, <clears throat> sucking of civil servants. Ruto must stop the victimization and sucking of civil servants whose only crime is either that they served in the previous government or that they come from particular communities. This politicization of the civil service is making career civil servants be outnumbered. It is killing professionalism and destroying the once proud civil service. We must protect our civil servants from these ills and particularly 
from tribal discrimination. Finally, fellow Kenyans, in the second phase of our protests, in response to public demand, we shall now hold protests every Monday and every Thursday beginning next week. <laughs>